fight for Vyrok time. Let's go. The stakes are higher than they've ever been. Have we been built to defend the Traveler? Have we been built to defend humanity? The Witness is going to bring all of that to the test. What is that? How would we react if we were facing extinction? And how are we going to stand together to overcome this? You know so what must be done. We were created for this moment, to deal with this conflict, to solve for this enemy. What the hell happens when <laughs> evil finally arrives and confronts the Traveler? The Traveler is threatened. The Witness is here. Callus's forces are here as well. The Pyramid Fleet is here. Big shit is going down. <laughs> Lightfall should feel like you have stepped into the middle of an active war. One of the values that we really wanted to push was making sure that you felt like the tip of the spear. You were the one who was initiating the action. You were the one who was taking control. You were the one who was attacking things. What this tone gave us the chance to do was to really surface the friendship, the camaraderie, the connections that we have to each other. Kaido, we'll need your troops. If the end of the universe is coming, what do we have left other than each other? Keep the enemy away from the Traveler at all cost. There's a pretty big, serious threat that is happening to the solar system, so we really wanted to bring that gravity and that weight into the story. Ah, got it! In a major way, what we're doing right now is we're both setting up the finale for the Light and Darkness saga. We're pulling the witness into the frame for the first time. The big question has been, what does it want with the Traveler? What will happen when it finds it? And in Lightfall, it does find it. I feel like the Witness is so drastically different from any other antagonist that we've had yes. in Destiny in the past. Now, a lot of our Destiny antagonists are like kind of over the top and theatrical in their own way. Yeah. And then we have the Witness, who's just so reserved. Sure, sure. That it's all about control with the Witness. The Witness is here to finish what the collapse started. Now, there's Callus, always been power hungry, uh -uh. in it for himself. He's now signed on as one of the Witness's disciples. We're seeing Callus go through a transformation and emerge as something new. My semblance is, matches my inner beauty. The odds are stacked against you. The Witness has arrived. We've got Callus. Everything's under attack. How do we deal with this? And then you find this thread. We knew we wanted to do another darkness power in Destiny. Are we going to do what everyone thinks we're going to do? Are we going to make, like, poison? No, 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 no. We're going to do something that you'd only find in Destiny. We're going to go talk about this thing called Strand, and it's the web of life. What does it mean to have a cosmic web that's connecting everything around you? How do you actually make that, like, an ability? How do you make that, like, a power? It's something that doesn't actually exist. You can't just point to fire, electricity, or ice. Coming up with the idea of the strings, the strands lighting up the world, I think that was when everything kind of started to come together. Strand is unlike any of the powers that we've gotten before. We didn't get it from the Traveler, we didn't get it from the Pyramids. It is a power that we find is unlocked within us as Guardians. When you pull on that thread and you start manipulating that web, oh, you can do some really powerful things. We have some exciting player class fantasies coming up with Strand that we're introducing. So we have the Hunter Threadrunner, which is going to introduce this threaded spike. The Hunter Super Silk Strike, it's just kind of roped art. You're constantly moving, constantly attacking. It feels fluid. It has an amazing style to it. It's just something we've never seen in Destiny before. <laughs> and then there's the Titan Berserker. And the name is pretty fitting. The Titan Super is Blade Fury, yes. where you weave these giant blades onto your hands. You have a melee attack that you can kind of combo indefinitely. And then you have your heavy attack, which sends out these suspending waves. 
And then there's the Warlock Broodweaver, a mastermind of the minions that we call the Threadlings. The Warlock Broodweaver super is Needle Storm. You create three sources of power, and then those then get launched out, and then those fly through the air. When they hit an enemy, they'll explode. When they hit the ground, they will then charge up and then turn into Threadlings. This is so cool. All the classes will have access to a grappling hook. When you select that, that takes up your grenade slot. It was a hard challenge because like, how can you make this idea of swinging through the world equivalent to a grenade? And so designers came up with this idea of a grapple melee. The grapple melee is incredibly powerful. I grapple onto an enemy, which stuns them for a second. And then when I get there, I grapple punch, blow them all up, and start shooting, and then the unravel projectiles are flying all over the place. All that stuff coming together was magic for me. Oh my god, that's destiny? This is going to be such a good counter if you get, like, yielded off the map. Like Neo Muna has existed for hundreds of years. It branched off from Earth during our collapse and shut off any communication. So they've been secretly existing on Neptune for a very long time and keeping themselves safe. It was amazing to see how the concept artists made all of this beautiful art feel really fresh and new, but also a part of the Destiny universe. When you think about how to design Neo Muna, like what's the architecture like? We're thinking of a lot of aerodynamic things, fins and sailboats. That informs the sort of the architectural form language that kind of looks unlike anything we've ever seen before. The high winds, strong pressure. We have that beach area where we show the sand is made out of diamonds. The whole terrain is following up into the beginning of the city. The color the graphic design, the vibrancy, and yeah, there's some mysteries in there. The cool it's thing about Neomuna is that it's like this big neon soap city, but it has quite a spectrum mm. of different environments. I think my favorite absolutely is the Thrilladrome. It is an arcade lost <laughs> sector, and I think we can relate to spending our days in a sticky arcade. <laughs> playing games with our buddies. I'm also so excited for people to see the Puka Pond with all of the Pukas that have been like such a mystery Aww. since Beyond Light. And then on the other side of the city is Kalos' ship. The Typhon Imperator has landed square in Ahimsa Park. You see that the city is indeed kind of in shambles in parts. There's smoke, there's explosions in the air. And I just go back to the teamwork of everybody getting into a room and thinking like, what can we do to make this feel high octane, very explosive and familiar? This is so cool. This is a city that needs the Guardian's help and needs their protection. and. Callus is going to do his level best to destroy it, and we're not going to let them, and neither are the Cloud Striders. There's a lot new about Lightfall. We have this new location, and it has these new personalities that come along with it. They're defenders of this city, and they have new perspectives that we really haven't seen in characters in Destiny, and that's taking the form of the Cloud Striders, Nimbus and Rohan. I understand what's at stake, like Bear. Far better than you. Rohan is the grizzled old veteran who's too old for this shit. And Nimbus is the oh, young rookie. Shit. Nimbus is learning on the job. Nimbus was definitely a favorite of I'm ours so to up. animate. They're so boisterous and fun-loving and a little smug, but super confident in their abilities. <gasps> the Cloud Striders, bottom line, are cool. Nimbus, on your stakes! We want the Tormentors to be they the most so scary big. unit that you've ever fought in the Destiny universe. Holy crap, this combatant is very powerful. It means business. It's incredibly intimidating. This thing wields a massive scythe. 
his command over all this void energy. <laughs> the tormentor can like grab you and that's something we've never really done before with the boss. Throws out the scythe, has the player in his hands. <laughs> And in those moments for Dark Harvest, we actually do things with audio to make it feel even more intimate, where we duck out all the background sound. So you really have this intimate moment with this terrifying creature grabbing you. So Lightfall and Season of Defiance are two sides of the Destiny coin. And so on the Lightfall side, we have crazy neon cities, going on an adventure far away, sort of bombastic action fantasy. On the Season of Defiance side of the coin, it's a story that's much more closer to home. Season of Defiance is about the ground war on Earth. Callus' forces are invading, and we're defending Earth. We're freeing prisoners. Go now. We're trying to protect the last city, but much more directly and under much more threat than we have seen in a long time. You're working with Petra, you're working with Devrum, you're working with all these people that you know that are close okay, to at your that are service. battling for the real thing you you're know, trying to save. Good to see him actually again. Except for just grabbing bounties. We have a lot of weapons and armor for players to earn, and I'm super excited to see what you've been working on. We have a couple of strand exotics. The Warlocks are getting what's called Swarmers. They're these boots that will, on Tangled Destruction, create new Threadlings at that location. Now they can either shoot it, or they can pick up a Tangle and throw a Tangle, and then that will also create Threadlings. The Hunters are getting this helmet that will help them grapple through the air. As you grapple, you gain this new ability called Woven Mail, and it's reducing the incoming damage except for headshots. The Titans get boots that will augment the aspect that they have. The aspect itself will just send out a wave that will suspend enemies in front of their barricade after casting it, but the boots will split them this up into three waves. Whenever they spend an enemy with these boots, on, they also gain woven mail. Brilliant. So I'm pushing the front line further and further by being tanky. I have been caught by those boots a couple times in our playtest. We have this incredibly cool heavy metal machine gun that fires according to its own rhythm, where it gets alternate effects every fourth bullet, and then every sixteenth bullet, it gets even more added to it. So we have this pistol that will use advanced technology to find your enemies. And so suddenly you're not worrying about aiming, you're really worrying about surviving during the lock-on time. And it opens you up to consider your movement more than your aiming, being able to lock on to multiple guys in your field of vision and then just obliterate all of them was, I think, a moment where I kind of went, whoa. We're introducing a ton of new features that are designed to make sure that the player experiences are as good as they can be. I think one of the things we're most excited about are loadouts and what we're calling build crafting 2.0, which is the system of both, hey, let's make it more understandable to how you make a build, and then let's allow you to save that build and quickly swap between them. When we started the process of figuring out how we are going to improve build crafting, one of the things that we knew we needed to do was make it easier to go from, I have never done any build crafting, to I'm really engaged in this system. When we engaged with the UI team and we said, we need to improve this experience, they came back with, well, what, what if we did a build management screen and let you see your whole build on one screen? It's all in one place. You can see it, you can read it, you can learn. And that coupled with our guardian ranks that's going to come in and basically be our first ever companion to every single player. Oh boy. <laughs> guardian ranks is our answer to what should I be doing in Destiny if I want to get better? You have this track that tells you what you should be doing. We're really excited for players to start diving into that system along with combinations, a way to finally Please say tell thank you guys you have it properly to covered. you've been playing with. We think <gasps> all of this stuff is coming together to bring this more cohesive relationship between our players. 
So when we think about the future of Destiny, we think there's so much more to discover. We're just on the coast right now. We want to get into the heart of this continent. We are walking to our 10-year anniversary of Destiny, and Destiny being such a core part of our players' lives. We just want to keep building Destiny. We've been talking about this antagonist to the Traveler for so long. In Lightfall, we get to spend time with the Witness in a way that we haven't yet. We're paying off storylines that have been coming together and been building for years. More questions will certainly arise. We have this finale with the final shape that's coming right after Lightfall, where we're closing down the Light and Darkness saga. Wait, they're closing the saga or they're opening the saga? But Destiny is far from over. This universe is about more than the conflict between the Traveler and the Pyramids, and we want to show you new ways to explore it. We want to show you new things to discover in the universe because we think that <laughs> Destiny has a lot to offer and Lightfall is the catalyst for that. It's high stakes, thrilling action, all at the same time pushing the Destiny story to places it's never been before.